Hello and welcome to the first video in this series on commerce in the 16 and 1700s. This one is on mercantilism and Africa. In 5e, we will describe the growth of European nations, including the commercial revolution and mercantilism, by reflecting on an experiential lesson about mercantile trade. For 5d, we will describe Africa and its increasing involvement in global trade by creating annotated maps detailing the role these nations played in the development of global commerce. Here's the big picture. European maritime nations competed for overseas markets, colonies, and resources, creating new economic practices such as mercantilism, linking European nations with their colonies. The exportation of slaves and demand for imported goods began to alter traditional economic patterns in Africa. So as you can see here in 1492, there really aren't too many empires to speak of. You got, you got England, you got France over here, Spain with some colonies over here, Portugal with some colonies along Africa. The Ottoman Empire is pretty substantial. You got Russia, and Denmark has some colonies up here in Iceland and Greenland. But by 1754, these European empires are everywhere. And studying commerce during this time period is incredibly important because, and look at your study guide, this is one of the answers, because, look, 1492, 1754. Europe goes from owning a tiny part of the world to owning a huge, huge chunk of all of the coastlines of the world, and they have reach into all of those countries, too. So studying this time period is important because it shows the beginnings of why Europe became the dominant force in the world. You can even also see, though, the Ottoman Empire expand significantly during this time period as well, and we'll talk about them. But here are the empires that you need to know, the commerce empires. You've got England, right here. you got France with colonies over here. England's got colonies in the New World, so does France. You have Spain in the yellow. You have, of the four, Netherlands is your fifth. The Netherlands owns a bunch of different colonies. They become very powerful in terms of their trading empire, especially because they own so much land over here in the East Indies where they trade for spices. And we'll also learn about the Ottoman Empire and the Mughal Empire. But they're not included in that list of five. They're their own like Asian empires, and they worked a little bit differently. So again, it's England, France, Portugal, Spain, the Netherlands. The commercial revolution was a big part that, of the changes in the world that pushed this commerce age forward. And the commercial revolution was a bunch of new em economic systems like banks, national debts, uh, insurance, joint stock companies. And these things are important. Let me explain why. Banks, for instance. Banks are the reason that people were able to get enough money in loans to start up large companies and then take long-distance trips to ship enormous numbers of goods. National debt lets company uh, countries work through really challenging military situations so that you can actually finance wars. Insurance helps spread the risk associated with going on long sea voyages around to multiple people. That way you're paying an insurance company instead of uh, you just losing everything when you lose a ship. And joint stock companies are like that, except it's all your investors pooling together their money so that then when you send out your ship, if that one ship is lost, hopefully you and your investors have bought four or five different ships all together and you only own part of one of those ships. So in the end, you end up only losing part of your money and making money on all the other ships you sent out. So these new ways of running the economy allowed this era of global commerce to take off. And mercantilism was a set of beliefs that helped drive the choices that people made during this time period. So here's the definition. An economic practice adopted by European colonial powers in an effort to become self-sufficient. It was based on the theory that colonies existed for the benefit of the mother country. And also that your wealth depended on how much gold and silver you actually had in the treasury. So here's the mercantilist argument for colonial expansion. See, here's a mother country. Mother country would be like all those five empires we talked about. That's the home country you send out people to colonize and you bring back gold and silver, foodstuffs to help your growing population, and raw materials that you can then make into finished goods and then sell back to your colonies. So mercantilists believed that colonies produce for the mother country, MC's mother country. The mother country protects colonies. Gold and silver are equal economic strength. The more you have, the more powerful you are. And that nations should export more than they import because that results in you getting more gold and more silver. So here's the view on mercantilism. Gold and silver, good for your treasury, mother country's treasury. And then you want a favorable balance of trade. See, it's you got more exports and fewer imports, so the imports are lighter. And here's the cycle. Mother country sends out manufactured goods to the colonies, which they use to collect more gold, silver, fur, lumber, and foodstuffs, which they send back to the mother country, which then 
uh, makes those into manufactured goods and sends them back. And most of the money then, you would have a little line here, that goes to the mother country. And so how does this affect Africa is the next question we have to ask ourselves. Because during this time period, Africa primarily exported slaves through the triangular trade and raw materials like ivory and gold and salt. And they imported manufactured goods from Europe, Asia, and the Americas. And that led to Africans adopting new technology. Like, for instance, they imported weapons like guns and steel into Africa. And actually, along the coastline, the, those people who bought those weapons... The Africans then used them to capture more slaves to sell back. And they also got new food products like corn and peanuts, which changes the diets of Africans in Africa and changes where people can live throughout Africa. So originally, most trade went across the Sahara Desert here. But as you can see, all of a sudden, most trade is going along the coastlines. And that's an important shift away from the previous traditional economic systems in Africa.